But we also have a very special guest with us this morning, our keynote speaker, who many of you will recognize as one of our own former students. Sarah Sutherland has an inspirational story to tell about her journey through Highland Park ISD. She was captain of the girls cross country and track and field teams for the 2009-2010 school year. She placed in the top 10 individually in UIL 4A state cross country meets in each of her four years and she won the individual state championship in her event in 2007. She was a student council class representative, an officer in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, a member of the National Honor Society, and a member of the Highland Park High School chapter of Habitat for Humanity. She's now a junior at the University of Texas where she's majoring in government and Spanish and where she runs on the UT Longhorn cross country team. Along the way, she learned many important lessons from her teachers and friends, and she is here to remind each of us of the profound influence we have on each and every student. Please give a very warm welcome to one of our own, Ms. Sarah Sutherland. Thank you so much, Dr. Orr. First of all, I can't even tell y'all what an honor and a pleasure it is to be here today. Looking out into this audience, I see so many of you who have made such a huge difference on my life. I actually rewrote this speech five times because I really wanted to convey to you all how much you mean to me. Why it is that being a Scot will forever be a part of who I am. Now, for those of you that I don't know, my name is Sarah Sutherland. My senior year of high school, Coach Susan Bailey pretty much summed me up in one sentence, and I quote, God made you so darn fast at running because you're always trying to be in five places at once. <laughs> Although I definitely cannot do her awesome accent justice, Coach Bailey, I am guilty as charged. I stand before you today, a 2010 graduate of Highland Park High School, to talk to you about a concept that I find beautiful, fascinating and completely applicable to the spirit of this school district. This place that ignites desire in so many to become excellent and multifaceted with five or so wonderful places to be. On a recent flight to a meet in Seattle, I read a book by a Hungarian psychologist whose name might actually be more difficult to say than Bogdovitz, if you can believe it. And he proposed that the moments in which one is completely and totally engrossed in a task, so much that one becomes the task and forgets even time and self-awareness are the happiest moments that one can experience. He called these periods of time flow. As I read, I smilingly equated flow with the feeling of being so lost in a hard track workout that I forget how much my legs hurt or how badly my lungs crave oxygen. Although my immediate reaction was to relate this idea solely to running, it dawned on me that the author with this unpronounceable name had inadvertently hit the proverbial nail on the head in describing what it is exactly that makes Highland Park so different from every other school district. Ladies and gentlemen, Flo is happening here. Flo is Miss Weber in all her theatrical glory, bringing a text to life that causes second semester seniors to talk Hamlet over lunch at Qdoba. Flow is the orchestra, a collision of driven individuals focusing on creating something greater than the sum of their parts. Flow is the yearbook, the bagpipe room before a new issue is released, and a million other manifestations of learning and action happening within these walls. I first felt flow at the Armstrong Library. Nestled in a beanbag, I poured over the pages of anything and everything that my beloved librarian, Mrs. Stevens, stuck in my little hands. Between Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and my personal favorite, Jenny and the Cat Club, which Mrs. Stevens actually had to kindly suggest that my mom buy me my own copy of so that I would finally return it to the library, I was hopelessly in love for the first time with something. Flow, as it turns out, is contagious. Teachers who live and breathe what it is that they want to teach, whether it be in or out of the classroom, cannot help but project their flow onto their students. Take, for example, Miss Harvey, my sixth grade English teacher. 
who wrote a long note on a creative writing assignment that she handed back to me. She told me that I had a special gift for words. I'm not exaggerating when I say for the next week, it felt as if walking on sunshine were my personal anthem. That felt great, and y'all, I still have that note that she wrote me. Or Mr. Chuang, who attended a 7 a.m. cross-country meet to cheer on my teammates and me. He encouraged me in an area where I felt confident, despite the fact that I was far from the best student in his chemistry class, and that made a lasting impression on me. I'll never forget when he patted me on the back right after I crossed the finish line in first. With a kind glint in his eye, he joked, you may have more natural talent at running than you do at chemistry. <laughs> there is definitely some truth to that. Or how about Ms. Switzer, who sacrificed her personal time and energy to help my friends and me with our dream to start a club for Christian girls at Highland Park High School. Roots was born out of her passion with over 100 active members still because Ms. Switzer's passion went hand in hand with ours. Or Mr. Hinton, who made student council one of the most worthwhile experiences of high school by emphasizing that character trumped cool and leading by the example of his own outstanding values and commitment to bettering the school. But the epitome of contagious flow is Coach Jerry Sutterfield. To say that this man has had a positive impact on me and countless others is an understatement, to say the least. The first mental image I have of him is on the very first day of high school cross country tryouts. I was a scrawny freshman and I was nervous. He stood there in his wide brimmed, big old sun hat that many of you have probably seen before. And for the first time, he articulated that as new Scots, we were called to be excellent both on and off the track. None of the long, difficult hours spent at White Rock Lake would earn us praise from our peers, nor would the tough decisions that we had to make on Saturday nights uh, that we spent at home, maybe with mom and dad instead of at a party. Mom and dad, I did have fun with y'all though, by the way. <laughs> it was Coach Sutterfield that painted a picture with his own words and actions of that cliche phrase that you'll see on posters all over this school that says, there are no small things when it comes to character. Because he challenged me to aspire to more, both as a runner and as a human being, I have grown enormously. Which brings me to my next point. Y'all, never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that I would get to be an All-American in Division I track, or be in the student government at the University of Texas, or even study Spanish. It has been thanks to your relentless encouragement, your well-timed words of kindness, your early morning tutorials, your patience with my attitude, and your contagious spirit that I have succeeded. Thank you all so very much for holding my hand through this process of trial and error that we call growing up. Regardless of the area of training, there comes a time when the coach has done all he can do for the athlete, and the athlete must stand alone on the starting line. Equ sorry, equipped with the knowledge, confidence, and physical readiness that each long and arduous practice brought. Just as Coach Sutterfield once told me, you will get a lot farther on your brains than you will on your legs. And he was right. These legs will probably never allow me to move quickly enough to be in five places at once, but the next best thing is being in the flow of one thing that I truly love, that and being a Scot. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Sarah. You are a wonderful exemplar of the hopes and aspirations that we hold for our students, and thank you for making time. Sarah still tries to be in five places at once, and she juggled a lot of irons to make this happen, and we're very appreciative of that.